Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine Driscoll and this is another episode of Building Better Brains where each week I talk about the root causes of why your child might be having a hard time learning, reading, and behaving and what are some solutions that reach way beyond the limitations of IEPs, medication, and endless tutoring. I've talked quite a bit about sensory motor development as well as brain organization and why there's so much overlap with diagnoses and so forth. And today I want to talk about something just that you can do right now, starting at home, uh, what I consider the fastest way to optimize learning, brain development, behavior, and so forth after nutrition. And every single person I talk to who is in the field of educational therapy, uh, occupational therapy, or anything of the sort has found the same thing, that exercise or movement has an incredible ability to change the brain. And this is not just based on anecdotal or professional opinion. Uh, this is based on quite a bit of research, decades of research, which I'm going to share some of that with you today. Um, and so, you know, we've heard quite a bit about the effects of nutrition or exercise on the body and how it can, you know, strengthen or improve lung capacity and, and strengthen the heart muscles and so forth. But we have not been trained or, um, you know, understood enough about the effects of exercise on the and, and the effects of exercise on the brain and how it can change the brain or even improve brain development and cognition. And I've said many times that the difference between a star student and a struggling student is that a star student has more connections and in the right places and a struggling student does not have as many and that can be changed, right? Um, as I've mentioned before, decades ago, um, even when I was in high school, I remember hearing you only had so many brain cells, you had to be careful not to kind of burn them out. Um, you know, don't take drugs, don't do this, don't do that. It was the only, you know, cell system, if you will, in the body that doesn't regenerate. And we know that's all baloney now that people can grow new neurons at any age as late as their 70s and 80s um, is what research has found. And so ultimately what exercise does to the body, it can also do to the brain. And there's major concerns in recent years about the lack of activity, complete inactivity among adolescents, among even children. Neighborhoods are way too quiet and it's a grave concern not only because, um, well, we know that it's of grave concern because of the impact it has on obesity, diabetes, heart disease, all that type of stuff, but now we're realizing it's also having a huge impact on brain development, uh, specifically with learning and behavior and even mood. And I really believe that part of the problem is that we don't see how exercise changes the body or changes the brain the way that we see how exercise changes the body. So we know if we exercise um, to lose weight, we're most likely going to lose weight. We're gonna see a slimming down. Or if we exercise to build up, to bulk up, we're gonna see eventually after hopefully even six weeks or so, we're gonna start seeing some definition with our muscles and eventually a, you know, more muscle development and so forth and we don't see those visible effects with the brain. And so, you know, I think part of the thing is that we're kind of really, it really does that much. And it really does do a really, create some really tangible visual changes in the brain, which I'm gonna talk about. And that is basically the exercise is like miracle grow for your child's brain. And I'm not just talking infant movements, I'm talking from childhood to teens. And of course, um, I don't specialize with elderly, uh, uh, clients and brain health and so forth, but we've even found the same thing with elderly people. So what exercise has been found to do is it feeds something called neurotrophins. And what neurotrophins are is the best way to describe it is, you know those little um, smoothie powders you can buy, you can buy them in either in packages or big bulk containers and you put them in your smoothies and often people use them for a protein, to add a protein into their smoothie but you can get really high-end ones that are just packed with superfoods and nutrients and so forth. I'm thinking of like the Juice Plus powder or you know the Vega protein powder and there's so many other great powders on the market. And so what these neurotrophins are, which um, you know get, which exercise helps to feed the brain with these, is they're like really high nutrient chemical packages. And these chemical packages help to increase the number of connections between neurons, which as we know, the more connections there are, the more that uh, your child's IQ is going to be increased, their processing speed, their memory, their ability to focus, their 
ability to be resilient, regulate their behavior better, and so forth. Essentially, exercise helps to make your kids smarter, right? And less moody. So, a, 1990, a 1999 study uh, found that researchers found that exercise creates the growth of new neurons. And um, this is, was really astounding whenever this start, first started coming out because they didn't think that something as simple as exercise could create su such profound effects on the brain. Something that we can do in our home, something that we can do just as a activity on a regular basis. And what they also found is that these growth of these new neurons resulted in children having better mood, better cognitive abilities, and a better memory. Um, so yes, movement builds better brains. So um, what they also found is that children who exercise on a daily basis had an increase in cortical mass and also had uh, more white matter in their brain. And what does that mean really? What does that translate as in real time? Well, this results in th these aspects, increased cortical mass and white matter results in better attention, better memory and better, um, better cognitive processes in general. So bottom line is if you don't move it, you lose it. So movement therapy for sure is a game changer. It's a very specific type of exercise or movement, if you will, um, which you know many of you know I specialize in, and that is using certain movements that target certain areas of the brain where there's weaknesses to help develop those areas, strengthen those areas, integrate primitive reflexes, and so forth. However, I can't stress enough that for whatever reason, if you can't get on, the, get on board with movement therapy or see someone who specializes in that at this point, then I can't stress enough the importance of just daily movement and how that can be a huge brain changer as well. Um, and also I want to reiterate that whenever I do my program with clients, I have my six month program that incorporates the nutrition and the movement therapy and so forth. I often have to remind clients, now remember, you don't have to continue doing these specific exercises, but it's really good to continue with just exercise and regular movement the way you would continue with, you know, you wouldn't just do a six month program to help your child's brain um, and apply those nutrition practices for six months and then think we're done now, he or she is better, they've improved and now we can go back to our old diet. So you want to not only inc continue improving and um, you know, can make that diet change sustainable, you also want to continue regularly exercising, hopefully several times a week, to make sure that your child's brain development remains optimal and so forth. Um, so the other aspect with exercise is that it builds muscles, right? We all know that. But what they found is that muscle, when we build muscle mass, this also coordinates with better brains or stronger brains and so forth. And that should come as no surprise for many of us um, if, there, if we have children on the spectrum because one of the common hallmarks is children with learning difficulties, autism spectrum and so forth is that they have low muscle tone. Well, really interesting because muscle tone is co coordinated with the hippocampus and um, exercise literally makes the hippocampus bigger. Um, and they found that in fact, kids who regularly exercise have a uh, hippocampus that's actually double the size compared to kids who did not regularly exercise. So what does a strong hippocampus do? Um, or what does this result in? This results in a more rapid growth of new neurons and molecules that help with brain plasticity. So brain plasticity being the brain's ability to change. And so this is really, really important that we have this strong hippocampus because when that happens, then our brain is constantly able to grow and improve and develop and so forth. Um, they also found that increased muscle mass was coordinated with um, or stimulated the production of something called BD, uh, BDNF. And BDNF is necessary for the growth of brain cells um, in the area responsible for memory. So you can basically, you know, and, and they found this even with the elderly, that whenever they worked on increasing their muscle math, mass, sorry, their dementia symptoms, Alzheimer's symptoms, or memory loss started to um, improve. Those, those symptoms started to disappear. And lastly, muscle mass helps to encourage brain cells to expand, connect, and communicate with one another. So really, really important uh, stuff. And then one other study I want to share, a 2001 study, which uh, stumbled across a really interesting finding. 
Um, and that was that exercise enhanced positive gene expression. So past videos, I've talked about how your destiny is not carved out in the fate of your genes, that your genes are, um, you know, your genes can change, you can alter your genes with lifestyle and so forth. And um, what they found is that the gene expression changed in areas related again to brain plasticity. So really, really important, really amazing benefits. And we can see why children who are on the spectrum, children who have learning difficulties, ADHD, and all kinds of other neurodevelopmental disorders see such improvement whenever they combine the nutrition with the movement therapy, um, we're kind of enhancing that positive gene expression in, you know, doubly, if you will. And this whole idea of exercise helping to improve the expression of um, positive genes kind of just debunks that whole myth that IQ is genetic, right? We hear that a lot. Well, you know, he comes from a really smart family or the one I heard just the other day from a couple kids was that IQ you know, or that um, Asians have, you know, they're just naturally smarter. And I kind of explained to them, well, it might seem that way because if you know people or Asians who are from, grew up in a family that tr has a traditional Asian culture, their culture really values um, education and really values excellence in education. So, um, you know, you're gonna, it's going to appear that they're smarter, but it's not that they're smarter because they're genetically smarter. It has to do with, again, environment. Uh, so bottom line is movement changes genes and uh, what researchers also found in this study is that movement improved the delivery of signals in the brain and this resulted in changes or things like alterations in the structure of the synapses so improvements in that area producing new neurons as well as increased activity of the neurons as well as connection between those neurons. So even the neurons that already existed, they became healthier, stronger, um, and be, you know, more optimal, if you will, in their ability to function. And so I've talked a lot about memory, learning, processing, so forth, and you might be wondering, okay, but what about exercise and behavior? And again, studies, you can find them, they are just like, there's a plethora of them, of this, of um, how just daily exercise can improve ADHD that children who exercise on a regular basis had less diagnosis of ADHD and even children who did have diagnoses saw significant improvement with um, their behavior impulsivity and so forth whenever they engage in a regular movement uh, several times a week and um, University of Illinois, they found that children who were in shape performed better on cognitive tests. And what the MRI revealed is that it even found that they had a much larger basal ganglia. So if you're wondering what the basal ganglia does, the basal ganglia helps a child basically to feel calm and happy. And it is basically the center or responsible for focus, improved thought processes, uh, regulation of s incoming sensory information. So, you know, thinking of those kids who have all kinds of sensory processing issues, which my daughter had for a long time, as well as better impulse control. So basal ganglia um, can often, like even with pans and pandas, which my daughter had, um, can become really inflamed. Um, and then you're gonna have all of these problems with uh, whether it's focus, sensory processing, um, could be mood focused, it really depends on the child. And the same can happen with um, children who are autism spectrum where there's inflammation in the basal ganglia. And so exercise can only help to reduce this inflammation, but it helps to improve the functioning of the basal ganglia and um, assists in the brain's ability to integrate uh, this information. So exercise reaps huge benefits for all ages, whether it's an infant, a child, a teenager, an adult, an adult or a senior. <coughs> and yes, regular exercise can make a difference if you stick with it and add in that nutrition and so forth. And that is precisely why movement therapy is so effective because whenever it's targeted and we're really targeting specific areas of the brain um, that are weak, and we're gonna build those connections in the layers or the order that the brain should have developed, then we're gonna even res get, we're gonna, it's going to result in even better results. 
Um, so if you found this information helpful, please share. And if you want to learn more about my programs, Reading Rockstar Bootcamp and the Full Potential Clinic, which are six month programs that combine nutrition to optimize brain health and brain function, as well as um, combining it with targeted movement therapy that helps to better organize the brain and create stronger connections in the brain and so forth. And uh, feel free to hop on my website, click the contact button and schedule a free 20 minute consult um, with my online scheduler. So thanks for watching. Until next time.